This video explains how using Cirrus testers you can safely hypot cables with components such as resistors, diodes, and ICs without damaging the components. To show the concept, we'll use a simple cable with six wires in it. The printout from a Cirrus tester for this cable would look like this. Net 1 is a wire that connects from J1 pin 1 to J2 pin 1. Net 2 goes from J1 pin 2 to J2 pin 2 with a jumper to J2 pin 3. Net 3 is J1 pin 4 to J2 pin 4, and so on. Cirrus Hypot testers first do a low voltage scan of all points looking for opens, shorts, and miswires before doing the Hypot test. If the continuity test passes, a net by net Hypot test proceeds as follows. Net 1 is raised up to the test voltage while all other nets are tied together and held low. Net 1 is then tested against all other nets for insulation resistance and dielectric withstand, and marked as either passed or failed high pot. The energy in Net 1 is then discharged and Net 2 is charged up while all other nets, including Net 1, are held low. The high pot test proceeds this way until all nets have been tested against all other nets. Now, what if the cable includes components? We'll add a capacitor between nets 3 and 4, and we'll add net 6, only instead of a wire, we'll make it a resistor. The test program now looks like this. Notice that the components are listed separately. As before, the continuity test is done first, but this time it also tests the components for correct placement and value. Now we can safely do the high pot test without damaging any of the components. Here's how. Again, each net is raised up to high voltage against all other nets, only this time, when we get to net 3, the tester knows that it is linked with net 4 via the capacitor. If net 3 were raised up to high voltage while net 4 were low, there would be a voltage drop across the capacitor which could damage it. Instead, Cirrus testers link the two nets together for the high pot test. This means that all points in linked nets are raised up to high voltage simultaneously, while all other nets are tied together at zero volts. Although the capacitor is now at a higher voltage potential than the other points in the cable, both ends are still at the same potential, meaning that the voltage across the capacitor is zero volts. Likewise, when we do the high pot test on net 6, the resistor, both ends are electrified simultaneously, which again means no voltage drop across the component, and therefore no current flow through it. Nets connected through resistors, diodes, and capacitors are automatically linked together this way to avoid being damaged. You can also add a link command anywhere in a test program to link together any nets, or points between which you don't ever want high voltage applied. Some high voltage cable tester manufacturers don't use this technique, rather they apply voltage to only one point in the cable at a time. Use caution when high pot testing with these testers, they can inadvertently apply high voltage across your components, damaging or even destroying them. Further questions? Call Cirrus today and we'll help you safely high pot test your cables.